He's the best player I ever coached, a genius in the penalty area. These words were spoken by the eternal legend of the game, Johan Cruyff. Romario, the 1,000 goal striker and the 1,000 all-night parties enthusiast. The shape of strikers to come. If you've never seen Romario play, you have to watch this video. Romario's story is one you've heard many times before. Poverty, growing up in a favela, Jaca Rezinho, Rio's second largest shantytown. It was on those lawless 15-a-side football matches that mixed kids with teenagers and grown-ups where Romario learned to use his small stature and master his close control of the ball. Exploding forward past a forest of legs trying to bring him down, with the sheer speed he developed and the skills honed both on cement pitches and the dreamy Rio beaches. Romario, encouraged by his dad to seek a life outside the jungle of favelas alleyways, joined local side Olaria and tried out against Rio giant Vasco da Gama. But he was rejected at first for being too small. His stature would give him the nickname of Baixinho, Shorty. That mistake was amended, of course, but this would be a constant in Romario's career, clashing with coaches. The teenager scored an undefined amount of goals for Vasco, but seven counted more than most, the ones that crowned him as the top goal scorer in the Tokyo Olympics in 88. That convinced PSV Eindhoven to make the move for the 22-year-old, a move that was pretty uncommon at the time. This was Romario's breakthrough moment. Romario could target a shot at any post, he could curl it in from long range to the top corner or drive it low to the back of the net. Romario was a master of first-time finish. Few were good as him, none as consistent as him. He could dribble defenders with body feints and quick bursts of speed, coming from a full stop to his runs. Romario would go around keepers, under keepers, over keepers. Heck, he could even score headers, despite being just five foot six. And one weapon stood out the most the toe poke. Instead of shooting with either side of his feet or the laces, he'd use the front part of his foot. That's incredibly dangerous for goalkeepers. The shot is sent off with tremendous power, and this type of shot gives you no clue as to where the ball might go. If it goes bad, the ball can go anywhere, leaving you looking like a fool. But like we said, Romario mastered this shot to the point that if you Google toe poke, you'll get Romario finish. The thing is, Romario was as talented as he was lazy and unprofessional. The Brazilian had two talents, football and partying. Some mornings, he would be phenomenal in training. Other days, you'd take one look at him and know he'd left his energy and his legs at home or in a nightclub. There was no controlling his private life. Romario partied all night, every night, even before matches. To Romario, Friday night was party night, even if we had a game the next day. He'd stay out until 4 in the morning and sleep all day before a 7.30 p.m. kickoff. He would dance, chat, meet a local lady, carouse with her, then sleep all day to be fresh for the game. So how the hell could Romario get away with this? Goals! In his first five years at PSV, Romario scored 165 goals in 167 games. He won three Dutch leagues, two Dutch cups, and a Super Cup. The better he'd play, the harder he'd party. If he saw that I was a bit more nervous than usual ahead of a big game, he'd come to me and say, take it easy, coach, I'm gonna score and we're going to win. What's incredible is that eight out of 10 times he told me that, he really did score and we really did win. The unmatched performances of Romario took him to the only place a man like him could have gone, Cruyff's dream team. And PSV brought in a teenager, an ever-smiling Ronaldo to cover for him. That 94 team of Kuman, Guardiola, Baquero, Laudrup, Stoichkov, and Romario was marvelous. The Brazilian was the final stone in Cruyff's infinity gauntlet. They could turn you to ashes with one snap. Romario scored 32 goals in his first season at the Camp Nou, enough to win La Liga, but Barca took a beating in the Champions League final. If you ask any Kule about Romario, they will tell you any of these two stories. First, how he scored a marvelous hat-trick in Barcelona's 5-0 beating of Real Madrid in 1994's Clasico, a true showing of his incredible goal-scoring repertoire. 
and how he solved an argument with Cruyff. An international break was ahead of them, and Barcelona players not called up were given time off. But Romario noticed most of his European teammates were just a few hours away from their homelands. While it took him a day to get to and from Brazil, he needed a few more days to enjoy Rio's Carnival. So Cruyff made him an offer. Score two goals. Romario did. He was subbed at halftime and left for the airport. When I was born, the man in the sky pointed to me and said, that's the guy. You see, that's the problem with Romario. His confidence was as great as his talent. Most of the time, he delivered. But when he didn't, the doubts took over. Cruyff saw the immense talent in him, and as a football icon that he was, he thought he could turn Romario into something he wasn't, an athlete. A lot of modern-day pundits and fans alike look back at players like Maradona, Ronaldinho, or Ronaldo and say, what a waste, if only they were as professional as Cristiano Ronaldo. This is a mistake. These type of poetic players were what they were on the pitch due to their nature off of it. Creativity and audacity aren't taught or trained, they are innate. Romario would face defenders like he would face his nightly conquests. He'd score goals in the same nonchalant manner that he'd down drink after drink before heading to the dance floor. Cruyff wanted a Guardiola the Brazilian. This would lead to a break in their relationship, and the forward who'd win the World Cup with Brazil over a U.S. summer would call it quits. Eu creio que agora veio o momento de volver a meu país, estar junto de minha família, meus amigos, agora volver a minha casa. Eu sou muito agradecido de coração a todo o povo de Barcelona, a afição, os diretivos, os jogadores. Saudade is a non-translatable term used in Brazil. It describes a nostalgic longing for a happiness that is past, one you can feel but cannot grasp. Romário's saudade was real. So much so, he had sand delivered to his backyard in Holland. His departure from Barcelona wasn't the end of Romario's career. Far from it. He'd even have another go at Spanish and European football at Valencia. But a rift with Luis Aragonés would end that chapter too. Romario would play over 10 more years, with the eventual cash-grabbing stint at Qatar, Australia, and the United States, retiring in 2009 putting in demonstration after demonstration that he could have played at the very top level for years. The saddest chapter, however, came at the 1998 World Cup. After forming a deadly duo with Ronaldo, labeled Roro, Romario was left out after not fully recovering from injury. Could he have given Brazil the decisive edge to win the 98 World Cup? We'll never know. The reality is that once Romario moved back to Brazil, he retired as a professional. But his football abilities didn't. Look at this footage. There was nothing really wrong with Romario. He just wasn't fit to train and faked his way out of it. His minimum effort was better than most. Winning the Carioca Championship with Flamengo in 1999 and doing a double with Vasco da Gama in 2000, including the South America Europa League. Romario even reached the sum of 1,000 goals, like Ore Pele. And like him, it came after a penalty which led to a pitch invasion that lasted for 20 minutes before the match resumed. But, like Pele, the figure is heavily disputed. Romario had his own team of people pulling the stats and included some of his youth goals. Some say he scored 929 goals, others count 772 goals at the lowest. The lowest! This for us is very important because you represent... Todo e qualquer evento que eu tiver que participar, se fosse depois de meio-dia, que eu gosto de dormir bem. <laughs> tá combinado, tá combinado. Romario became the blueprint for the modern attacker, a fast as the wind forward capable of every skill on his way to goal. If you're still not clear on his game, picture this. An attacker with the moves of Sergio Aguero, the dribbling skills and finishing of Ronaldo Nazario, the confidence of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, the speed of Mbappe, and the party skills of Romario. No one came close to him. Ronaldinho tried.